Last time I spoke about how David Aha used the clever technique of breaking the same action and movement into various panels, combined with a silhouette effect to create a real sense of movement across a page. I mentioned in that episode he used a similar but slightly amended effect to create another sense of movement too. The second method is placing different images within the same scene at various heights and angles to understand positioning. And by doing this, it gives you a sense of height and movement that occurs via eye lines. I'll take a dive into that method in this episode, using the same issue, issue 6. I want to do that just to showcase the crazy flexibility in storytelling AHA brings into every issue. He's doing this, what I discussed in the previous episode, and so much more in just this one single issue. You're watching Strip Panel Naked, I'm Hass, and I'm going to show you some of the cool stuff lurking in the pages of some of the best comics. So this is a great example as a primer to what I'm going to be talking about. A handful of pages into this issue, Hawkeye, Spider-Man and Wolverine have been in a fight with some more baddies, AIM. Now from this top panel you can see everyone's placement. Hawkeye in the corner on the ground, Wolverine stood up and Spider-Man dangling upside down from his web, his head more or less lined up next to Wolverine's. Not quite related to the theme of this episode, but will tie in, is an interesting point about the composition of that top panel. Images can be broken into the rule of thirds, where you split an image both horizontally and vertically into thirds, and typically what ends up being pleasing to the eye is placing your key visual information along the intersecting lines of those thirds. So here's an example over this panel, with Wolverine and Spider-Man hovering around one point, the agents here sitting around another, but Hawkeye is very purposefully nowhere near them, he's placed right away from the action, in the corner, as much as possible, in a very non-pleasing way. It's a great touch to show how Hawkeye ends up being seen as part of the superhero world. He's not placed around any of the important intersections. Anyway, I mentioned the character placement. So next we have a series of four panels with the characters talking to each other. You could have had these four panels placed together, same height, and it would have allowed the back and forth interaction. But AHA decides to recreate the idea of their height positions in the panel layout. And it's not just because that would be a sensible thing to do, but it builds on the reasoning for placing Hawkeye in the bottom corner as before in our previous panel. This is also related to a scripting note with Fraction, I'm sure that this must have been there, but AHA is making the decision to reinforce this as part of the panelling layout. He's making Hawkeye look very small, he's reminding us as readers that he is at the bottom of the hierarchy here. So we add some negative space to Hawkeye's first panel area to that single tier. He essentially removes some of Hawkeye's storytelling space, which is an interesting touch because why? What does that add? Well it asks us to notice that he has less space. We have to pass that white space to get to the actual panel with Hawkeye to hear what he's got to say. So we really do have to see that AHA has removed space from him, and our eyes get pulled down, very specifically down. It lessens his power, in a way weakening him, making him look smaller and more reduced than Wolverine or Spider-Man. Because when we go across to Wolverine, we have to raise our eye, we have to see the fact that he is higher in the tier of panels because of the way that AHA has used the negative space. And the height of Wolverine in this tier also corresponds to the height of him in the panel above. And same with Spider-Man. Their heads again are at equal height, clearly designed, because it means that the other heroes in this scene share the same height. When you look at them, you end up looking at the same place, the same level above ground, and the fourth panel shows Hawkeye once again below them. Even when he's come to a little, you still have to physically look down at him. It goes to place him differently than these heroes. Again, he doesn't look heroic. And there's white space underneath Wolverine's panel there. That feels like the bottom of that panel border is telling us we don't need to look down anymore. Keep your eye up and move straight across to the right. It's doing the exact opposite of what Hawkeye's panel previous to this was doing. It's a way of not getting us to lower our eye and create some sense of movement, but instead it's ushering us across to the right. Our eye line stays the same level when seeing Wolverine and Spider-Man, thereby subconsciously but also very clearly visually placing them on the same level. Next, you either pull your eye down the cross for Spider-Man's dialogue and to look at Hawkeye's face, which creates that downward movement, or you look down for Spidey's dialogue, look up for Hawkeye's, and then look down again, because AHA has made this panel the full height of the tier. Either way, he's forcing you down. So you see this sense of movement being created purely by the panel placement and character positioning within those panels. It's designed to bounce you around, but not just for a created sense of dynamism, but actually for understanding character and their relationships. I mentioned last episode the juxtaposition, how panel 1 informs panel 2, and this is no different. My understanding of panel 1, of that above negative space, is informed further by panel 2 and its use of below negative space. Equally, my understanding of panel 3 is directly informed by Hawkeye's lower positioning of panel 4. They're all rubbing off on each other and telling us more than just the contents of their speech balloons. And I talk a little bit about film references every now and then with strip panel naked, and camera movement is one of those visual devices that is entirely film and TV based. You can't recreate the sensation of a Children of Men style tracking shot in a novel quite the same visceral way, and you can't do it in comics. What AHA can do, though, is use this panelling effect to create the feeling of fluid movement around various images and locales. A fight breaks out in this issue, where Hawkeye ends up getting battered by the tracksuit mob. 
The first panel of this page has him firing a single arrow up and away from the panel. There's a few ways to read this page, but either way it creates a sensation of being drawn around the world in an almost long take. If you initially follow that line the arrow creates, which was my way of reading it, you're led off the panel, into the negative space, and see the arrow hit a satellite dish on a roof. You can almost see the arc the arrow takes to get there, and that negative space creates some sense of time and distance between those two panels, but it feels to me like we follow it in the air. The panel is also placed higher, creating that sense of arc of height and distance. So here Aha uses the raised panel purely for that effect, for height. He uses the negative space for distance. And on the bottom half of the page we're given again a series of different images. Some of the style from the previous episode bleeds through here with a silhouette, go watch that episode to hear more about that, but we're seeing these different placements and negative space once again. The first is a drop down, emulating the forward movement Hawkeye himself would have from the blow to the back of the head with that bat. We fall with him into the next panel directly below. Aha brings us back up with the lines running out of the next panel, pulling you up to see the bats in the air, and then layers that negative space on top of the right side tier to squash the right side panel into a half sized one. Again, pulls your eye down, almost recreating the actual movement of the bat through the way he lays out the panels. First Hawkeye goes down, the bat gets raised, and it's swung down again. The negative space is such a brilliant tool when used like this, as it gives you opportunity to force the eye to squash and move around the positioning of those moments for such a strong effect. You can recreate that final panel with a tour panel instead, maybe just leaving snow in the area where currently there is just white, but it still invites the eye to look there. It still offers something. By removing that, you force the eye straight down. And the final example I want to show is a really, really simple one. It again uses a nice moment of negative space, really the only one on this entire page. It should be pretty easy to see what Ahar is doing here now after all this, but it begins with the open kitchen area of Hawkeye's apartment. Our eye is pulled up to his trainers walking down the stairs, but we move across and down to see Clint looking out the front of his apartment door. Simple, basic stuff. So what's the point of the trainers on the stairs? What does it actually add to the story itself? Well, it gives a sense of movement. Those two panels side by side, otherwise they, they do work. Hawkeye's not in his apartment, you know, he's standing outside, that's fine. It tells us the information. But adding that panel in gives us the fact that Hawkeye is now heading outside. We get a beat of information that he's actually doing something. There's movement, there's action, which is a big deal with this story as an issue. This single panel packs some of the most emotional weight, oddly enough, but what it also does is gives us the movement of Clint actually heading downstairs, which I'd argue is what really contributes to the moment meaning something. By splitting the tear and using the upper half, our half pulls our eye up just to pull it back down again. We're seeing and creating the movement of Clint walking down the stairs to tell the tracksuit baddies he's staying. Emotional heft in a pair of purple trainers. And it's the smart of this whole creative team to build this book. And what Aha does is lay the real foundations for us as readers taking in pages like this entirely visually. There's no words here. And that's honestly a testament of how strong the storytelling ends up being through the many of his pages of Hawkeye. It goes back to the classic adage of show don't tell. What Aha does is not just show, but build, create, move. His work guides and flows and holds your hand, not in a bad way, but in a way to lead you around the page. It doesn't just show you character relationships, it actually builds them. It does the work that to cinema comes so easy. It creates movement. And the most amazing thing is it makes it look just as easy as swinging a camera around. Again, Hawkeye continues to be a brilliant book to learn and understand the craft of visual storytelling in comics in a mainstream superhero style. But the lessons here are applicable across the entire medium. Thanks for watching. Strip Panel Naked continues to be supported by the amazing patrons via patreon.com slash stripppanelnaked. For their pledges, they get access to a vault of exclusive content updated every single week. I'd love your support too. For more comics talk and analysis, you can find me on Twitter at HassanOE. And finally, hit subscribe and that notification button to stay up to date with all the latest episodes, and I'll see you next time.